Hey, I'm Tammy T, artist and producer. I'm gonna give you some tips on music production. So this is what my template looks like. I already have a couple of bass samples and some of my favorite drum machines, a few different synthesizers, a piano, and I've also routed for a vocal track. And then I'm only using three different send effects, one room reverb, one plate reverb, and then one big reverb, a really long one that is also side chained to the bass drum. And then on my master channel, I have an equalizer that has a little high boost and also boosts the sub and takes away some of the mud. And this is maybe not something you should do if you want a really flat listening environment, but it's something you can do if you want a fun listening environment. Because yeah, for me, I just feel more creative when it sounds more fun. Routing for side chaining, it's something I like to have prepared already. So create a track with a really short drum sample, like this, and then I pull the fader down all the way. And then when you make a compressor for side chain, you route the signal from post effects. That means before the fader that we just pulled down. And then it's just super easy to copy paste this compressor, for instance, on this synthesizer now. I like to have uh, a few of these buttons mapped to uh, things in Ableton, especially play, stop and record. And that's because if you're working in a plugin, changing something, then the spacebar doesn't work anymore. You can't play or pause anymore. So you have to... That's why it's so good to have it MIDI mapped already. And then I also have a few things going on on my master channel. I'm using a plugin called Panipulator. It's a free plugin. And with this one, I can super easily uh, sum to mono. So if we listen to... And that's so I can check for monocompatibility really in a really early stage of my productions. One thing that I find really useful is to have one button map to flipping the left and right channel. And uh, because I have kind of bad hearing in my right ear, so I don't really trust myself with panning instruments. And so if I flip the left and right channel and the volume is louder or more quiet, then that probably means I haven't panned things so evenly. So I'm going to show you here what that sounds like. And that's also kind of useful if you're working in a room that isn't very well balanced. Uh, one thing I really like to do is have an effect rack where I take away some of the low end, some of the high end, and also sum it to mono, and then only hearing it from one speaker. And this is to kind of simulate a Bluetooth speaker. So we can listen what that sounds like. And when you have an effect track like this, just press the MIDI button and then the on off. And then you press the MIDI key you want to use or MIDI button and then that's the way to toggle it on and off. And one thing that makes me work a lot faster is this really nerdy mouse. Uh, it has lots of buttons here on the side that you can map to any kind of uh, key combinations. And for instance, I hate taking my hand off the mouse to reach like the delete key. It's way over there, or I have to remove this hand. And I don't know, I just feel like I'm losing a valuable like split of a second that I could be using for producing instead. So I mapped, for example, the delete key to the mouse. And also I map all these 
awkward to reach uh, key combinations to the mouse instead to speed up my workflow. And one last thing is when you, if you make a template, it's really important that you that you also make a template backup. Um, yeah, tips to speed up your workflow. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.